Florida State wide receiver Keon Coleman is a consensus top 10 player, but he's probably the player in this class that I'm lowest on relative to consensus. I have him as my seventh ranked receiver and my 30th ranked player overall, early second round grade. Now you can never know for sure, but I am guessing that he's gonna fall at least a little bit on other people's boards as they start to watch the second half of the season, especially. Through the conference championship game, he has 658 yards and 11 touchdowns, but he's kind of stumbled to the finish line. Three games in the last five weeks of the season where he was held under 30 receiving yards. But my thoughts on Keon Coleman aren't really based on statistics. I have receivers with similar or less production higher than him. I'll start out with the strengths though, because there is a lot of stuff that he does well. A second round grade is still a player that I really like. He's a dominant contested target with strong hands and excellent play strength. You see this not only with his ability to high point and track the football in tight windows, but he also does a great job before the catch of establishing favorable body positioning, kind of disarming the corner, keeping himself clean, what I would call boxing someone out at the catch point. On goal line fades, I wouldn't take anyone in this class over Keon Coleman besides Marvin Harrison Jr. probably. He does a really good job when he's running a route against off coverage or zone coverage of boxing out crashing defensive backs and securing the ball through contact. So if he's running a hitch into zone coverage and he's got that hook defender driving on the route right behind him, he's able to box him out, keep him out of his frame, make difficult contested catches. He's one of the best run blocking receivers that I've ever scouted. He has a lot of those George Pickens type of plays where he's on the backside of the run. He just gives a quick two hand strike to the cornerback, sends him flying three yards backwards. But there's also a lot of plays more involved in the action. If you go back and watch Trey Benson's biggest runs from this season, a lot of those key on Coleman's the one clearing the way with a key block. He has not only the physicality and willingness to get in there and make contact, but he also has a great understanding of leverage and angles where he needs to have his hands placed. And I think he's going to be one of the highest graded receivers as a run blocker on most team sports. I think he has good instincts and vision as a ball carrier. He seems to have good anticipation of defenders that are coming from outside of his field of vision. And he's not the most dynamic after the catch, but I think he maximizes what he can do. And then I don't think he has great breakaway speed, but he does run some pretty nice double moves. He's capable of using that to separate vertically. You go to the Syracuse game, he got a long touchdown off of a sluggo route. But Keon Coleman's overall inability to separate, even at the ACC level, is very concerning to me. And it's the reason that I only have a second round grade on him. His route breaks are slow and rounded. Dig routes look like semicircles with Keon Coleman. He's listed at six foot four. I see him more at six foot two, but we'll give him the height and size. Outside of that, I don't really think he has any elite athletic traits. His speed to threaten over the top without a double move is pretty underwhelming. His quickness and fluidity, explosiveness out of his breaks is just not there to me. He's a slow starter, doesn't have great acceleration off the line of scrimmage, and I don't think he makes up for that with enough nuance or advanced technique as a route runner. He telegraphs most of his breaks, he doesn't do a whole lot to set up defenders and coerce them into false steps, and then a lot of that extends to his ability or inability to beat press coverage. He just has average foot quickness, he doesn't really have the twitch to threaten defenders at the line of scrimmage, and you see him get stuck by average ACC corners that are in phase from the snap to 10 yards down the field. Now there are times he does a good job with his hands to defeat press coverage, he has a pretty effective white move that he uses sometimes to knock down that inside hand. I'd like to see him lean more into that and just start powering through press coverage instead of trying to beat them with quickness and footwork. But even when he is able to get some leverage against press coverage, again, the speed down the field isn't really threatening, so they're usually able to stay in his hip pocket. And overall, it's just really hard for me to see Keon Coleman separating against NFL corners. So for him to be a successful NFL receiver, he's going to have to win at the catch point in those contested jump ball situations. Situations. And if you look up his highlight reel, again, he has some of the most dominant contested catches of anyone in this class, but it wasn't necessarily an efficient play for Florida State. He finished the year 10 of 30 on contested catches. Again, I think the physical traits are just average to above average, which is a lot of being able to win those contested catches in the NFL. And overall, throwing to an open receiver is a lot more efficient than throwing a jump ball, no matter who's catching it. So I see the high-end comp for Keon Coleman as a slightly less athletic athletic George Pickens. I think Devontae Parker is probably more of a mid-range comp for him, but I do see a lot of in Keel Harry, unfortunately. And, you know, I always hope that I'm wrong on these players, even though it might make me look like a worse draft analyst. I genuinely do root for everyone to succeed, but especially with
with Keon Coleman because he is an incredibly fun player to watch. His demeanor and play style, if that hits in the NFL, it's going to be a really entertaining player for whoever drafts them. But the difference between watching Keon Coleman on the broadcast and watching him on tape was pretty jarring because what he does when he runs off the screen was the most concerning thing to me. And I just can't put a first round grade on someone that I don't view as a high level separator. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL players or teams that you'd like me to cover.